Tonight, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo decorates DIG Alkali as new IGP. Nigeria's Health Ministry to review nation's health system as World Marks Health Day. Plus, Team Delta leads on medals table as Edo 2020 enters the fight. A very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us tonight on the Main News Bulletin. I am Agatha Egwari Ojo. Now, Vice President Professor Yemi Shibajo this Wednesday decorated the new Acting Inspector General of Police, Usman Alkali Baba, at a brief ceremony held at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. The Vice President urge, urges the Acting Inspector General of Police to put his best to salvage and protect the dignity of the Nigerian Police Force by being a bridge builder between the police and the people. State House correspondent Jide Unifade reports. Our place of affairs, my Barry Bingyade, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, and other top officers of the police at a brief ceremony held at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. The Vice President urged the Acting Inspector General of Police to put up his best to salvage and protect the dignity of the Nigerian police force. The task is huge, the pre vice president says, promising the support of the administration towards a crime-free society. Vice President Yamiyo Shimbajo also reminded the acting IGP on the need to diligently implement the community policing program already been executed by his predecessor. The police must now rebuild, in some ways also, the broken bridges of trust with the public and regain the confidence of the citizenry. This is an ongoing challenge, is an ongoing task that the police force and, and all of the senior members of the police force must take on as a responsibility, that of the continual process of building trust with the Nigerian public. One of the ways it can do this is by implementing the community policing policy, which had already taken off, and reconceptualizing policing as a task carried out in partnership with local communities and by officers who are members of these localities. Under your leadership, the force must live up to all of the high standards for professional conduct and compliance with the rule of law. It must significantly improve the welfare and working conditions of its officers while rapidly scaling up its forensic, logistical, logistical and operational capacities to meet today's challenges. You must stamp out the excesses and abuses and the culture of impunity demonstrated by some elements of the force which provoke public outrage against the institution. Vice President Yemio Shimbajo thanked the former Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, for a job well done, stressing that the Nigerian people will forever remember his great contributions towards the improvement of the Niger Police Force. And talking health now, this year's World Health Day has been used as an appropriate platform to focus on the need to review Nigeria's health system in order to build a fairer and healthier world for everyone to live in. Ivio Yahiri reports that Minister of Health, Dr. Sagi Ihaniri, chaired the event to mark the day in Benin City, as the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Adeleke Olorunibe, took charge of the event in Abuja. Over the years, there has been an increased clamor for the healthcare system in Nigeria to be reviewed. The COVID-19 pandemic taxed the system greatly and later increasingly sensitized government to the lapses which needs urgent attention. The goal for the government now is to bring healthcare closer to the people and break all barriers that will hinder the plans of a great healthcare system, especially barriers of financial access. As the world marks World Health Day, the Minister of Health is hopeful that the health sector's next level agenda will handle all lapses. To ensure quality health care gets to all and sundry, the government is also ready to support states of the Federation to boost their facilities. Dr. Yaniri used the opportunity to call on resident doctors to call off the strike. These issues, whenever they come up, can be discussed with WHO country representative, permanent secretary, Edo State Ministry of Health, 
and the Minister of State for Health, who virtually attended the event, gave their insights. Meanwhile, there was a commemorative walk at the Eagle Square Abuja to mark this year's World Health Day. In Benin, Ivie Oyahiri, NTA News. In the meantime, Minister of Health Dr. Osagi Aniri says the directive to put on hold the AstraZeneca vaccine against COVID-19 for states that have exhausted half of their doses is to ensure that a second dose is available for people who have taken the first dose of the vaccine. He was guest on NTA Benin phone-in program Midweek Connect on the sidelines of the World Health Day, where he also said more brands of COVID-19 vaccine are on the way. Here is an excerpt. Very soon we are going to be licensing other vaccines like the Johnson & Johnson and uh, perhaps also the Sputnik from Russia and uh, there are others which we are testing at NAFDAQ. NAFDAQ is going to do the licensing and those vaccines will be coming in soon. So now uh, using the different programs, we have a, a panel of uh, 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 vaccines now, uh, we want to have enough vaccines to have given everybody double dose of the AstraZeneca. So from what we have right now, what we want to cover um, those who have received vaccination, that's about going to a million now, and then cover the uh, second dose. And in the meantime, by the time the next uh, uh, tranche of uh, AstraZeneca comes in, and they uh, will get other vaccines like uh, Sputnik and uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson, uh, we already know those we are vaccinated and those we have to start off with again. So it's just re-strategizing. Um, discontinued is not the right word. We are re-strategizing. He also spoke about the ongoing reorganization of the National Health Insurance Scheme to cover more Nigerians. There is a new law that we are waiting for, for which we are waiting for the assent. And that new law will now make health insurance mandatory for every person to contribute, or in case of very indigent citizens, be paid for by the basic health care provision for which the President has uh, started giving out every year. It covers, as I said, most of the problems in primary health care and problems to secondary health care, up to minor and intermediate operation uh, um, problems. In intermediate surgery, let us say. If you make it mandatory, either you you register yourself or somebody can register you and pay for you. It's an uh, improved package. He fielded questions from callers on the program. Away from health, as the people of Edo State await the appointment list of Governor Gordon Obaseki's administration, the governor wants political leaders to have a change of mindset from the old way of politicking and not interfere in the bureaucracy of the civil service. Governor was speaking at a stakeholders meeting with members of the State Transition Committee and the political class in Government House. Elizabeth Somoko now reports. To bring the dividends of democracy to the people, the state government is organizing this stakeholders meeting with members of the political class from across the state and members of the Transition Committee, the first of its kind since the inauguration of this administration. The public service is the engine of government. And if you have, want to have an effective governance, you must have a strong engine. Without that, you cannot effectively deliver to the people quality governance. For Governor Gordon Obaseki, the world, the country, and the economy is changing. He foresees challenges if politics is not handled right. He also provides solutions. Any candidate or any political party that does not see this 
can expect that we will do business as we used to do before. We'll play politics the way we used to play. We are taking a huge risk. The way we ran Nigeria, and subsequently the politics up till now, is that it doesn't matter. The country can go on holiday. The country can go and sleep. At the end of the month, we all just go to Abuja and we collect money and we come back and we spend. My brother, we are in trouble. Preaching democracy and how it can be deepened, the governor says the structure of the civil service must not be tempered with, but strengthened. For me, the first thing we must do is strengthen that structure. Because we cannot continue to blame a weak system. We are all saying the civil service is weak. We are blaming it. But the actions we are taking is not helping us strengthen the civil service for that. And without a strong civil service, we politicians cannot shine. Because people will not see our policies. Everybody must stay on their lip. Let the civil service and the bureaucracy do their work. The stakeholders later had a closed on meeting to streamline ways to raise new revenue system to run the states. In Benin, Elizabeth Omako, NT News. We'll take a break now. More reports shortly to stay with us. Next time you visit the ancient city of Benin, two things will excite you. The warmth and welcome of its people and of course, the class and style of its hospitality business. Rendeki Gold, home of hospitality like no other. Located in one of the most serene environments in the ancient city. Truly classy and exquisite with world-class facilities. Fully equipped digital multipurpose hall with life-size ultra-high definition LED screen. 180 square meters king size swim pool with bubble bath. Enough to leave you breathless. The exotic Ariel's Bistro and Grill Restaurant with variety of continental dishes, especially some of the rarest delicacies you can find in town. Fact is, a visit will truly convince you that we are gold. Rendeki Gold is the gold wing of the prestigious Rendeki Royal Hotel at 6 Uhenui Street off Ihama and Boundary Roads, GRA Benin City, www.rendekihotels.com. Rendeki Gold, our hospitality is gold. eternal glory with profound sadness but with total submission to the will of the almighty god the families of musa of iora esako west local government area and chief christopher kk momo of ivukasa quarters foga esako central local government area of edo state regret to announce the passing onto glory of their daughter wife mother grandmother and aunt mrs tela irela mir musa name momo on tuesday 23rd march 2021 in Dallas, Texas, aged 62. A celebration of Stella Irela Mir Moses' life is as follows. Saturday, April 10, 2021, time 2.30 p.m., a requiem mass at St. Charles Borough Mill Catholic Church, 1004 Estate, Victoria Island, Lagos. Thursday, April 15, 2021, time 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., visitation with a rosary prayer will be held at Berkshire Chapel, 9073 Berkshire Drive, Frisco, Texas. 
Friday, April 16, 2021, time 11 a.m., Funeral Mass at St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church, Frisco, Texas. Interment follows at Ridgeview West Memorial Park, 7800 Sanctuary Drive, Frisco, Texas. She is survived by husband, daughter, son, son-in-law, grandson, siblings, nephews, and... Edo State University, Uzari, formerly Edo University, Yamo, announces the immediate commencement of the 2020-2021 postgraduate admission exercise into the following faculties. Faculty of Arts, Management and Social Sciences, Farmers. Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences and Faculty of Science. Available programs are Postgraduate Diploma, Masters and PhD in Economics, History and International Studies, Political Science, Biochemistry, Computer Science and Microbiology, Postgraduate Diploma and Masters in Accounting. Edo State University Uzare parades an array of qualified academic staff, modern technological facilities and first in West Africa Canvas Learning Management System. Admissions into several undergraduate programs are still open. Transfer and direct entry students may also apply. At Edo State University Uzare, you are assured of uninterrupted academic calendar. For further information on the admission procedures, log on to the university website on www.edouniversity.edu.ng. Edo State University Uzare with develop leaders. Signed. Registrar. Thank you for staying tuned. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo says the National Sports Festival is not only an avenue for athletes to display their sporting prowess, but a veritable tool for promoting unity of Nigeria. He stated this while declaring open the 20th edition of the festival tagged Edo 2020 in Benin City. Elizabeth Omoko has details. The much awaited 20th National Sports Festival, NSF, finally kicked off with an opening ceremony at the renovated Samak Bermuda Stadium, coming after one year of postponement due to a coronavirus pandemic and 27 months since the 19th National Sports Festival ended in Abuja. Ogun State, Gateway State. State. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, represented by the Minister of Sports, expressed President Mohamed Buhari's determination in engaging youth productively. He wants both the public and private sectors to invest in sports. Now the share population of the participants, historically, normally about 14,000, the reach of this festival, it engages our youth and the National Sports Festival deserves a foremost place and the priority of any government. An investment in both our sports, men and women, and in sporting infrastructure is most desired. At a time the nation is faced with insecurity, Governor Basaki emphasized on the need for peace, tolerance, and brotherhood. He wants athletes to compete fairly. Our dear athletes, all of you have come from different parts of the country and this game belongs to you. Please compete fairly in the games and show us all the products of the many hours you spend practicing to, the, to be the best in what you do. On these grounds, you will reap the reward of hard work, of perseverance and determination through your performance and conduct so that you can be the real role models for other youth in Nigeria. Already, C stars on 500 athletes from the 35 states and the FCT are just them for 635 gold medals, 635 silver medals, and 885 bronze medals in 32 sports during the 12-day long events. In Benin, Elizabeth Omako, NT News. A book, The Fall of the Last Godfather, written by a political stalwart, 
lecture, Sidahusa has been formally presented to the public. Media consultant to the author, Chief Ugi Ugidigbe, at the media briefing in Benin described the book as a compilation of the author's views and counsels on the Edo State September 19, 2020 governorship election. We present this work, The Fall of the Godfather to the Glory of God in the name of God the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The Fall of the Last Godfather, subtitled Political Battle Speeches, which is also available in audio, is a documentation of the author's personal views and experiences on issues that transpired before and during the last governorship election. For the book consultant to the author, The Fall of the Last Godfather is the author's contribution to enrich individuals' political library and enhance democratic development. For the book consultant to the author, the Fall of the Last Godfather is the author's contribution to enrich individuals' political library and enhance democratic development. It is an advisory to political leaders on the need to listen not just to the soothing words or ego massaging words of their acolytes, who, in most cases, do so most times acts in self-interest. Equally, political leaders must learn to listen to the sometimes discomforting voices from the other side. Fans of the book, including daughter of the author, believe it is a must read for everyone, particularly the youths. We are very grateful for all everybody all of us that stood together to make this kind of book come to reality. Having read this book, I want to say um, I call him the Nostradamus of our time because he has taken time to critically analyze the political um, life cycle of the states. It's a great book and a wonderful one at that. And I would want everybody to please get a copy of it. The 12 chapters book, book and audio, is available in all leading bookshops nationwide while more details of the book can be accessed from www.thefalloutofthelastgodfather.com. In Benin, Obehio Toba Presai, NTA News. The concluding segment of the news comes right after this break. This day. <laughs> Two years in mind, remember you today as always, our ever-loving husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, and friend, engineer Pastor Stephen Osawa Wagobasimi. Daddy, it has been two years since you transited to join the Saints Triumphant. Though it seems just like yesterday as the sweet memories you left behind is always fresh in our minds. You were and still remain a great father on account of the fulfilled life we lived and the positive values imparted on us, your children. Fondly remembered you today and always by your children and grandchildren. Signed, Osamede Agwaba Simin for the family. God be with you till we meet. Obituary. With every heart but gratitude to God for a fulfilled life, the Benin royal family announces the home call of their daughter, mother, grandmother, and sister, Princess Dr. Irene Ododo Odao Ni Lawa Osula, on 30th March 2021 at age 70. A former Solicitor General of Edo State, Princess Ododo Odaro was a philanthropist who was active in many social cultural organizations and touched many lives. She is survived by children, grandchildren, siblings, and other relatives. Obsequies, Thursday 8th April 2021, service of songs at 4 p.m., Friday 9th April, funeral service at 8.30 a.m., Sunday 11th April 2021, outing service at 9 a.m. All services we hold at St. Matthew's Cathedral, Sakoba Road, Benin City. May God grant our kind soul eternal rest. Sign, Prince Gani Osula for the family. Thank you for staying on. A former governor of Edo State, Adam Sushomole, has donated a church to the Catholic Diocese of Auchi, the Church of St. Joseph in Iamo, 
which he built single-handedly, was dedicated as a parish by the Bishop of Auchi Diocese, Most Reverend Gabriel Dunia. It was to mark his 69th birthday anniversary. The canonical erection of the St. Joseph Catholic Church was attended by the Deputy Governor of Edo State, Comrade Philip Tribal, two serving ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, senators and other political bigwigs within and outside the state, who were on ground to identify with the immediate past national chairman of the APC, Comrade Adams Oshomole, who donated the edifice to the church. to also thank comrade for believing in the in our mother uh, his late wife a vision to have a chapel that transformed into a church the catholic bishop of Auchi diocese most reverend gabriel dunia who performed the canonical erection urged the people to remain one as the church is built for the worship of the almighty god <laughs> Bishop Dunia, after the various proceedings, pronounced the church as a parish with St. John Church, Iholo, as a mass center under the parish and retained Reverend Father Peter Igelewa as the parish priest. The parish priest, Reverend Father Igelewa, and some people commended Adams Ali Oshomole for donating the building to the church. So what we have had today is that this building that was built by Comrade Adams Oshomole is now a holy place and used only for the worship of God. Most Reverend Gabriel Dunia also confirmed 126 delegates of the parish as well as dedicated the St. Mary Grotto in the church. The St. Joseph Catholic Church Iambo was founded in 1926 and named after the initiator, led by Joseph Idawehai, in Iyamu, Victor Odion Acha, and a news. Now, participating teams in the National Sports Festival Edo 2020 are beginning to find their range, and as they consolidate on their performances, Team Delta is taking the early lead on the medals table. As at April 6, with 12 gold, 12 silver, and six bronze medals. Paul Omukago has this and more on the festival. Delta State, who are defending champions, are closely followed by the host Edo with 10 gold, 12 silver, and nine bronze medals. While Baesa State has 10 gold, 4 silver, and six bronze medals to place third on the log. At the Indo Sports Hall, University of Benin Center, where combative sports, taekwondo, and judo all sway, some bouts have been decided in different weight categories. A particular one that caught our attention was the plus 77 kilogram female contest between Edo and Bayeso State, which Edo won after an initial protest. In officiating, when two corner judges take a decision, it's binding. Except they will put up a protest which we should have disciplinary committee. It's too small for two competitions to hold at the same time. Like judo is holding and taekwondo is holding. We need like to have the whole of the whole, the, the space, so that we can use two mats. Preliminary rounds in tennis and boxing at the Samuel Ogbemedia Stadium and the Koshura Center, respectively, were on when NTA visited as an official in boxing reacted this way. Uh, the competition of uh, boxing, we have to deal with the rules. Rule is the rule. Anything apart from the rules, we can never tolerate it. After the opening ceremony, athletes are in competitive mode as the rush for medals continue. In Benin, Paulo Mukago, NTN News. And the death has been announced of Mrs. Stella Irilamie Musa. 
in Palo University Teaching Hospital, Dallas, Texas, in the United States of America. She was 62 years. The late Stella Irulamie Musa is from the royal family of Chief Christopher and Elizabeth Momo of EU Hasa Quarters Fuga in Esako Central Local Government Area of Edo State. A devout Christian and member of many pious societies in the Catholic Church and served as president of the Catholic Women Organization, CWO, for several years. Stella Musa was a graduate of modern languages from the University of Ibadan and holds a bachelor's degree in law from the University of Lagos. In a statement from the family on funeral arrangements, there will be a requiem mass on Saturday, 10th April 2021 at Charles Borromeo Catholic Church, Victoria Island, Lagos at 2.30 in the afternoon. Funeral mass will follow on Friday, April 16th at St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in Frisco, Texas at 11 o'clock in the morning. Interment follows at Ridgeview West Memory Park in Frisco, Texas. Stella Musa is survived by husband, Paul Musa, children, and many family relations, including her sister, the Zona Director of NTAB Network Center, Pauline Igmano. That's a wrap on our package tonight. Thank you for watching. Good evening.